There we go. Okay. Hello. Hello. <laughs> okay. Well, we are live. It is 2 p.m. in Colorado, and this is the beautiful, amazing Stallings family. Um, they're coming to us live from Hawaii, and it is 2, oh, sorry, 10, 10 a.m., yeah, right, in Hawaii, and we have our coffee, because so, you know, since I'm not able to, like, oh, be with you, like, Kaya's real great, she's got her orange juice, <laughs> her vitamin C, staying healthy, my mom and dad. Okay, so um, before we get into the serious stuff, I really would like to know what's in your coffee mug and how you like to drink your coffee. So, um, Miss Denisha is mom. Mom, how do you drink your coffee? I drink my coffee with hot chocolate in it. Oh, wow. And <laughs> it is delicious. Sounds tasty. Yeah, that's it. Just hot chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I do in the mornings put like I have um, powdered greens, but it has chocolate in it. So I can mix that in my coffee so it tastes more like a mocha. So, okay, I'm with you on that. All right. And then we have the fearless leader of the family, Dad Bernard. Um, welcome. What What is your drink of choice today? Um, I like my coffee with cream and a little bit of honey. Uh, okay. A lot of matcha tea. Actually, matcha tea fan. I don't have coffee, but I have tea. Rose. I'm gonna leave the call. Yeah, Jackie, you're like. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. 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 Are you there? Okay, here we go. Here we go. All right. <laughs> Hello. Okay. Here okay. Here we go. We're going to try this again. We're back. Hello. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, hi. Okay. Let's try this again. Hello. Okay. Technology. Okay. Here we go. We're going to try this again. <laughs> We're back. Hello. Wait. Let me try. Okay, let's try this. Again. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, here we go. We're gonna try this again. How do I turn that off? Okay, are we here? Yes. Okay. Hmm. You know, we are keeping it real. Yes, we are. Because this is, you know, what? Um, this is the reality of using technology to communicate. And so we are going to get into the ins and outs of all of this. So um, I want to, let's start again. I want to introduce the amazing yeah. family. <laughs> hello, hello. And thank you for everybody who's tuning in and sorry for that little glitch. Um, we have two amazing college students who are full-time university students at the University of Colorado in Denver. Yes, and we have mom and dad, um, Bernard, wave your hand, is the amazing dad and amazing mom, Denisha. And um, we just wanted to have a little talk about what life has been like and the challenges that you've had and your hopes and dreams and what's been working, what hasn't been working, um, just to have a casual talk as if I were in your Hawaii home, That's which well, I, I am coming to yeah. your house. So people don't realize like the, the Stallings family live in Hawaii. They are literally, it's 10 a.m. in Hawaii and I'm so jealous. What's the temperature right now? Okay, and and um, Bernard, can you just stand up and show everybody in Colorado what you're wearing? 
shorts. Yes, shorts. Okay, we had two days of snow and you're in shorts. All right. So first of all, let's let everybody kind of uh, know who everybody is. So I'm gonna start with Kaya. So Kaya, what year are you at CU? I'm a sophomore at CU. Okay. Um, I did spend some of my time doing psychology, but then I decided to switch my major to something that I was more in tune with, which was okay. computer science. So it's been going pretty well. Okay, so you're um, a sophomore at CU, but you transferred in from University of Hawaii, correct? I did. I transferred from UH West, which is about a 10 minute drive, if that, from our house. Um, so I realized that it was, it's a very small school, and so I wanted something a little bit bigger, something with better programs, and so I decided to go to CU. Nice. We're really glad to have you in Colorado. Um, and then Akello. Tell, tell us about what year you're in and what you're studying. So I, after this semester, I will be a junior at CU Denver. Um, I do recording arts, um, not on just a track, which basically is just like the audio production version of um, my program. And then um, I play piano for people and do some music stuff on the side at our school. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. Trump play. <laughs> play a little bit of here and there. <laughs> And we'll, we'll save dad um, for last. I'm going to go over to mom. Mom, can you tell us what you do? I am a graphic designer and fine artist. <laughs> and that's what I do. I, um, I lean more towards graphic design than fine art these days. Um, and I'm trying to just really get my focus now that the kids are in college. But um, that's what I'm doing with my life now. <laughs> Now, I've um, been very lucky to see a lot of your artwork that you've made, and you are an amazing creative artist, Thank you. but you also are such a huge humanitarian with your gifts and your talents. Mm -hmm. So even though you don't have any children in high school, you have been volunteering with um, building and painting and decorating sets and helping the local drama team to have, I mean, like world-class, beautiful <laughs> sets. Um, they are so lucky to have you, um, that you have this gift, how you can take what's in your mind and, and share it with the public is amazing. And then last but not least is dad, Bernard, share with us what you do. So I work for the Department of the Army, um, what's called the Law and Distance System. That's pretty much what that does. I am an advisor, technical supporter of all the logistical systems that exist within the army. Go all over the world. There's only like 32 of us that support the entire army. So, wow, that's a really tight team working for the army. <laughs> um, and I know you you do a lot of traveling. Um, so my dad was in the army, and so he was gone a lot on TDY. And I think as um, families who are connected with the military have to get used to sharing our dads with um, the government, you know, and the work that you do to keep us safe and to make sure everything is working. Um, we say thank you for the work that you do. And um, I will say that now that we've had everybody talk, if you can talk like you're more outside, then I think we can pick up more of your voice because um, I don't want anybody to miss what you're saying um, in this interview. So um, I also want to say that this is how I met the Stallings family. I happened to be at Kalasny Music in Denver um, right, right before school was starting. And I saw Akello, Bernard, and Denisha standing in the music store. And I looked at them and I was like, I don't know these people. And I I think I know everybody in the music world in Denver. I mean, I, and I was, so I was like, should I say anything to them or should I not? And I'm, everybody knows I don't meet a stranger. So I just was like, hi, I'm a music educator here. Who are you? And that's when I found out that mom and dad were literally dropping a Kello off at CU Denver. You were only going to be in town for what, a week? For two weeks? Yeah, Two weeks, weeks like basically sight unseen to, to Colorado, right? Never been to Colorado. Akello decided, 
I want to go to CU Denver and major in music, which is a great testament to the university system and how you decided that you were going to come and be a part of the CU system. Um, so we can talk more about that too, if we, if we have time, but um, we, we just bonded that day and literally became family and um, spent a lot of time together. And Akello has been with us for Thanksgiving and um, over to the house at the studio. And so we, and then, and then when Kaya decided to transfer from University of Hawaii to, um, to Denver, I was like, yay, I've got like two more that I can like love on because these are two of the brightest most polite, thoughtful young people I have met in a long time. Yes. Yeah, so as parents, you have done a great job in um, raising your children. And I know, um, Denisha, talking with you, it's been really hard as a mom to have your kids so far away from you. I mean, they're not even in the same like land as you, you know, and I think this is something that a lot of parents experience when they send their kids off to college. Um, when they're not easily accessible to them. Um, you want to know that you're sending your kids to a um, campus where they're going to be safe, where they're going to get a great education, um, and all of those things that we as parents think about. Um, so good job. I want to prop up moms and dads and, and all that you do. So um, let me ask Kaya and Akello, how did your school year start off this year? Talk to me. Oh, man, it started off awesome. Like, classes were going great. Everyone was working with each other in terms of, like, the music department and whatnot. Um, we had, like, a lot, a lot of projects going for the recording um, part of our school. So that was really cool. Um, I don't know. I don't know about Kaya. Yeah. Well, the start of this year was a little rough. I will say the second semester was a lot better than the, the first semester because I decided that I was going to switch my major, which is a really hard choice to make. Um, but once I decided that and made that choice, things started to get a lot better. I was meeting people, I was making friends, you know, spending my time at school, spending my time, you know, working on things that I wanted to work on, studying hard. So it was, it was working out pretty well um, the second time around. But First semester was a little hard because I felt really lost and I didn't really know if I wanted to, you know, stick with what I was doing. And so I just kind of had to make that decision of like, all right, you're here to educate yourself on something. So you might as well educate yourself on something that you're willing to put the work in, you know, something that you're willing to work for. So that was a difficult place to make. I, I love that you um, came to that conclusion by yourself that you started out as a psychology major and you personally decided that that was not um, the major for you. You switched to English, is that right? Yeah, English. So okay, talk to me because, you know, um, in my campaign, I do talk about utilization, how, it, how important it is for college students to get a degree in something that they're gonna actually use. Like you, when you graduate that very next day, you should be able to get a job in your degree. You're spending all this time and all this money um, what was it? What was that process? Did you talk to a counselor? Like, how did you come to that decision that maybe being a psychology major wasn't the path for you, but to change to English was the path? Um, it started with my surroundings first. I kind of started to notice that I didn't really have the same work ethic as the people around me. You know, they were putting in the time to learn the things about psychology, and I felt like I didn't have the same passion as them. And so it kind of started this weird you know, turmoil within myself because I didn't understand like why I couldn't just do what my co like, not my coworkers, sorry, my peers were doing um, as far as schoolwork went. You know, I wanted to go out and go spend four hours studying, but I felt like I couldn't because it was subject matter that I really didn't care about. And so I, once I got to that point, I started to have to pick apart like why am I feeling like this and what can I do about it? And so I started to Talk to my counselors, you know, I talked to mom about it and asked her like, you know, what should I do? And she told me like, stop wasting your time and your money if to do something that you don't like. You know, if you're gonna spend this money, then do something that you care about, then just do it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's, it was, um, it was that and I just said it like, you know what, I'm just gonna rip off the bandaid, I'm just gonna do it. Um, because you should spend your time in college doing something that you enjoy, that's why you're there. Um, it would be an extreme waste of time to not do so. And I think that people have to really start understanding that. It's like, you can find a job 
you know, in your degree as long as you're willing to put the work in for it. So it doesn't matter what you do, it's just how you do it. Well, you know, I'm really proud of you for making that decision to start focusing on something that you found um, valuable, that you had a passion for, mm -hmm. and that really made sense for your future you know, something that you could see doing. I, I also changed my major my sophomore year. <laughs> so it's not unusual um, to do that. And um, so I want to ask Akello, um, your major, how did you decide on what you were going to focus on in college? So I had been playing trumpet in band for like six years before I had moved out to Colorado and I was like I really enjoy like playing music but like I want to be a part of like the audio production side and um I don't know Hawaii is not like it's a great place in terms of like people and like the culture but in terms of like audio production and like um quality of like schooling here I, I just knew it kind of wasn't the place for me um so I looked into CU Denver and I saw that they had like audio production with like um, studios that you could use and like it was a really diverse community and like a whole bunch of um, musicians were going to be there from like different genres that you could work with so I was like this is like awesome for me because I can just be around music all the time which is really really great. Well and I want to do a big shout out for the audio production department at CU Denver. I mean the music and the professors and the experience like the real life experience that they bring um, is just amazing. You know you don't have to be in New York City. You don't have to be in LA. You can come right to Denver and be exposed to world-class education and music um, of all genres. And so I'm really excited that you're having a great experience at CU Denver in, with your music and the concerts, I'm sure like are just amazing and the students that are attracted there. We've got the symphony. Okay, so this is kind of an advertisement for Denver too. If anybody's watching this, like we want you to come to Colorado um, that we've got world-class symphony here and world-class musicians. Um, I will do a tiny little plug for my husband who is a record producer and jazz musician too. So, um, and we, we love working with um, young people who really have a desire and a goal and the work ethic. And I know one of the reasons why you're having so much success at CU Denver is because you apply yourself and you've made the decision that, you know, when all of your professors, like anybody who does this extra work will get this benefit. And you're always one of the first ones to say, I will do whatever it takes to be, be able to be a part of like um, record productions and special um, things that your professors are opening up for the students to make their choice. And you have just risen to the top of your class. So good for you. Um, so we talked literally the night before you had, you got on a plane to go back to Hawaii. Yes, sir. When, when, um, CU decided that all the campuses were going to shut down yeah. and you both of you were staying in the dorm housing yeah. right how um talk about well let's talk let's back up before we go into the time that you left right talk about your experience living on campus oh man <laughs> <laughs> living on campus is definitely what you make of it for <laughs> sure I've seen so many people get caught up in the drama of like the dorm room and like having a whole bunch of friends and stuff like they kind of like lose sight of what they came to college for and it, it's definitely like a, a sad thing to see so i think as long as like you you stay and like realize what you're in college for and like you kind of stay on that track of like what you're there to do dorm room is great however it is kind of super easy to get caught up in like the drama and like party life of like the dorm room. but that's just <laughs> I, I mean, I think that's typical when you're 18 and 19 years old and you're free and yeah. um, you're like, well, I all I have to really do is do my studying, studying. But I, you know, it's you're growing up and I know it's um, you have to put boundaries on yourself. And I know that you two have been exploring how what those boundaries look like. Like you're, you're starting to become, like I've seen it, but difference from last year, even to this year, like the maturity has increased and you're like, okay, you know, really time for me to like get serious about um, 
my studies because before you know it, like you guys are halfway through, right? Yeah, yeah. Before you know it, you're going to be done. Yeah. And then you're going to be like, what, what did, what I use my time for? And so, um, Kaya, did you have anything that you wanted to add? Yeah, I basically feel the same way about it. It's really, really easy to just get so caught up in what everybody else has going on. And you really just have to focus on like, I'm here to do this. And if I let others, you know, cloud my judgment, I'm not going to be able to get where I want. And I think we were really lucky this semester, this year, because, um, we were roommates together so like we kind of have the same mindset so we weren't really worried about like other people come in and like you know sticking their nose and like all of our business and all of this stuff it was like we had you know our little system and it worked really well because we had the same mindset of like yeah. we're here to do our work we're not here to like party every night i mean yes we can have fun but at the end of the day we're here to go to school um and so towards the end of the semester we had to like we had people who were like knocking on our door four times a day and we were like you seriously have to <laughs> stop doing that <laughs> you have to quit and people were getting upset at us because we weren't coming to the door every 15 minutes to come hang out and we had to tell people like we're not here we don't vibe with that you know we don't like people coming to knock at our door every 10 minutes to come hang out like we have stuff we need to get done right. i appreciate you wanting to hang out but i would much rather plan something and do that than do like yeah. random spontaneous it's the wednesday afternoon oh, like oh, yeah. no i <laughs> So <laughs> that's actually the perfect segue into my next question to talk about um, the decision to go home. And you got on probably one of the last flights off the continent that week. Um, what has, re how has remote learning changed? Oh, look at that reaction. I, I want to know, because you went from being really um, focused on your time and, and not coming to the door and not going out and partying every opportunity and really starting to take your, your classes seriously to now you are away from your professors and this it's remote. So talk to me about um, how it's working for you. Honestly, Priscilla, if I'm being honest, it's been rough. Um, uh, like grades are looking fine, but like in terms of like the process of everything, it's just, too stressful for what it has to be. Like, I just want to throw out, I think audio production online is like not a thing. Like you can't do audio production online effectively and get what you want out of it. Like we have a really good recording studio at CU Denver with like all these high equipment mics and all this equipment. And like, it's good to be in that environment because you get to learn and see like actual equipment that you'd be using in like a day-to-day -day life, like for your career. And like, I come home and like I can't use any of that equipment and I'm supposed to be taking audio production online. It's like we just learned about reamping last week in AP2 and I don't have any of like the analog software to do base reamping. So like I'm I don't know. This is it's been very stressful trying to like figure everything out and like still complete your goals, I guess. Yeah. Sure. And and what kind of communication um, are you being given from your professors or they're just saying, hey, guys, just do the very best that you can. I mean, we realize that you don't have the, the same equipment or yeah. are, are they able to provide you with alternative yeah. learning experiences? Talk to me about that. Um, so I think they're, they're doing like the most they can um, for our department. They got us a 90 day license for Pro Tools. Um, which is going to allow us to um, work in the industry standard uh, without like having to pay anything out of our own pocket, which I think is really great. But you still get situations like the base cramping, like last week, where it's just like no one's going to have like a, a Kemper like amp to just be able to like ramp it, you know. So it's it's been it's been a little weird. <laughs> I understand. Um, Kaya, how is your experience? It's a little bit different, huh? Being yeah. an English major. Yes. So it's a little bit different for me. It's still proven itself to be really difficult, um, mostly because a lot of my classes this semester were workshop classes. So it was based around, you know, putting your work in front of people and getting that immediate feedback from your peers. Um, but with the remote learning, it's a little different because now everybody kind of has the choice whether or not they want to offer comments or offer workshop comments on your work. So you wouldn't be getting the same type of, you know, judgment criticism, the same type of feedback because, you know, 
how it's been going, most people generally don't really want to do it. If I'm being honest, like people just don't want to log on to Canvas, especially with English majors. I mean, we're like the worst as far as procrastination goes. Like we need that rigid structure in order to actually like do stuff. And it's, and so when you put a bunch of English majors and you tell them, all right, everybody, like get your work in. It's like, well, I mean, I could, but like also I couldn't. And people have it. And so that's where you, and that's where the disparities come at, come in because, you know, you really want to get this feedback, but you can't. And you understand why people aren't, but you're still like, okay, but we're still in school, you know? So it's been, it's been very difficult. I have lab classes that I was taking and it's been really hard to do like a biology lab over the internet. It's kind of impossible almost to be, you know, we're, uh, doing a semester long project about the microbiota in the guts of dogs. And so we had to like analyze fecal samples in class and you can't really, you can't really do that, you know, at your, at your house. You can't just go out and be like, Hey, can I just like get some of your dog poop real quick? Like, it just doesn't work like that. <laughs> um, so it's been proving itself to be really difficult, but I'm, through it and try. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's one thing to do remote learning. It's another thing to do remote learning under a pandemic where you're not even allowed to like leave your house or go somewhere to get the resources. It's not like Akello, you could say, call someone who has a recording studio in town and say, hey, can I come and do some coursework at your studio? I mean, we're supposed to be social distancing. And so um, it's one challenge on top of another challenge right now. And you, you've talked about some of those challenges, um, even as self-motivated as you are, and maybe as some of your peers are, at this point, you're starting to see, it sounds like you're starting to see people back off of the technology and just, is that what you're seeing? They're, they're, they're not seeing a sense of urgency to do some of the coursework? Most definitely. It's, it's been kind of like crazy in that respect. It's like, how you were saying, like, there's a lot of, like, self-driven students at CU Denver, like, especially in my program, like, you kind of just have to be self-driven if you want to get where you want to be, so to, like, see myself and my peers kind of, like, fall off of that is, like, super depressing and sad, like, no one just wants to be here. So this is a great segue to my next question, yeah. <laughs> which, um, and mom and dad, I'm gonna get to you in a minute, I just kind of wanted to, um, hear from the students for a second because I want to know what you've learned about yourself. You kind of hinted now that you um, are totally on your own. Um, and I don't mean totally. I mean, you have your professors you can email or Zoom with. Are you guys using Zoom as a technology with your professors? Um, what are you learning about yourself and your particular learning style? Um, I learned about myself that I think Kai kind of touched up upon this, like when she was talking about um, English majors. But I need like structure in my life um, to stay like focused. And I, I don't know if that's just because like I have a lot of growing up to do. But waking up every day and going to work and like having to go to class physically like keeps me in line to like do what I'm supposed to do. So like when when I'm back home and I can just wake up and like go to class whenever because they're just posted on Canvas, it's like, when am I really gonna go to class? <laughs> you know, like I, I'm sitting here with like keyboards in my room and like, I, I love to do music. So like, it's like I can go to class, but like there's also like music that I could be like making. It's, it's just, it's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Definitely feel the same way. Uh, I, I need that that rigid structure of like, all right, at nine o'clock you're gonna go to class. At this time you're gonna go to this class. Or you're gonna go do this after. And you like having that set schedule for yourself is really really important. I think, and I think a lot of college kids didn't notice how important it was until it got snatched away from us. <laughs> um, and so it it's I've also learned myself like if I don't tell myself okay, do one thing today, just do one thing, like just any one thing for school. I'm not going to do it. I won't. <laughs> I literally will not look at campus. And it's like, I have to have to have that self-discipline to like, okay, get up and be like, I know I have to do it. I know it sucks, but like do it because it's important. But I've also learned that I'm terrible at just teaching myself material. It's, it's, it's proven itself to be really difficult because having someone explain to you like 
what this means and how it's supposed to be done. It's a lot easier than to sit down with yourself and be like, am I doing this right? Like, am I teaching myself this the correct way? Like, if I was to take an exam right now, would I fail it? Probably, but I mean, <laughs> that's where we're at right now. So like having to read, like learn how to learn is <laughs> what I feel like I'm doing. Sure. So do you feel comfortable, both of you, do you feel comfortable reaching out to your professors um, if you have questions or are you too shy? Um, I have been working with my professors because I realized that I can't, you know, keep a silence when it comes to like my schoolwork and stuff. If I genuinely want the help that I need, I'm going to have to reach out to them. I'm going to have to be like, hey, this is what's going on, you know. Maybe we can work out an extension. Maybe we can work out, you know, times to meet on Zoom for like one-on-one -on -one time, like office hours. I've learned that um, it's really, really important to stay in communication with your professors because these are the people who are going to help you succeed in these times. You know, they're your teachers. So you can kind of lean on them just a little bit for what you need as a student. Um, and so I would really encourage anyone if they're feeling like they're overwhelmed or they're feeling like they can't get stuff done, reach out to your professors you know, one or just one of them just to, you know, um, just to get some help. It's really important. It's very, I think it's really important. Thanks. Okay. So I want to talk to mom and dad. So my first question is, you know, you raise these two beautiful children and then you kick them out of the nest and you thought you were free <laughs> and now they're back home. Okay. So how um how is this different now having your college kids at home versus your high school kids you know do you do you see a difference in how you're supporting them and how has your support changed well we're still mom and dad to them so for them it's like oh yeah when's dinner ready and I'm like, wait I, I wasn't ready for this like just how they're adjusting to going to school online we're just into having them back earlier because we were like planning all this stuff and we're like, oh, we have time to do it before they get back. And now it's like, well, I guess we'll wait because <laughs> they're here now. So <laughs> 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 to begin with, you know, when they first left, but then you adjust to having an empty nest. And then when you adjust and you start actually liking the freedom and liking, you know, the quiet, and then it all comes back, you know, like rushing in on you. It's it's abrupt and, and it took me aback for a minute, <laughs> but um, we're just back to being us again. You know, it's, it's not, you know, a huge difference, but I do think that in terms of learning, um, they enjoy like the physical campus experience more. So <clears throat> I, it's, it's been a, it's been a big adjustment because you know, as they've been out of school and they've gotten, they've grown so much more than when they first left, um, they have met, you know, fellow is literally just out of high school. And now, you know, you know here we are two, almost three years later. So they've grown, they've learned more, and their personalities have developed. And so have them come back and, and be under this pandemic, it was a big adjustment because now you have, they're not kids anymore. You don't parent, or try not to parent the way we did when they were smart kids. They're literally adults now. So you have to adjust that whole mindset going from kids to young adults and be more of a, still a parent, but you, you, you kind of fall back into the role of being um, a guidance, a life guidance counselor, if you will. You know, mm -hmm. hey, I give you my opinion, you make a decision, it's on you, you know, that type of at the end of the day, they're my babies. <laughs> right? I mean, the, my mom would always say, Pasala, in her little Korean accent, Pasala, I don't care if you're the president of the United States, I'm still your mom. And so um, I would just be like, oh my goodness. Uh, but it's true. I mean, Akello and Kaya, you will always be your parents' babies. You know, yeah. it's always going to be your mom. But I'm sure. Um, I know what I've seen um, parents when their children get older and then they start to have their own families, like that bond just starts to change because then you become, you know, more, they're more like colleagues and peers, but um, I can already, 
I'm sure you can see that your relationships are changing with your young adults when they're gone for um, a school year and they come back and you're like, wow, you've like, you're growing up a little bit. And um, that, I think that's really cool. It's and I love. It, it really is. You know, like, each year that passed, you know, you see them grow to where they're able to be more together by themselves. Like that. As they spread and grow, as a parent, you have to match that and pull back. And, and you know, it, it's hard because you still want to, you know, you want to be there and you want to be that that mentor and all that, but you have to let them go and you know, experience the world, you know, with success, failure, and different, you know, on their own. They can build their own experiences. So that for us right now, I would say probably the biggest struggle is, is managing that transition as they move into mm -hmm. Yeah, because you want them to, you know, become independent and like it's your responsibility to get your coursework done. You know, I'm not going to tell you when you when they're in high school. You're like, did you get your work done? Because then you don't get to do the other fun stuff that you get to do. Now they're paying for their education, and well, I know you are too. <laughs> like parents are paying. Like I'm paying for your education, so you need to get your work done. Um, but they're more invested in college, I'm sure. And so you talked a little bit about like what's changed, but from a positive standpoint, um, what's been the best thing, and anybody can jump in, like what's been the best thing to come out of this time of confinement? Um, Ooh, that's a good question, Ms. Priscilla. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the best thing? For me, it's being together again, because, you know, I was used mm -hmm. to momming, you know, they were my entire life, you know, because Bernard was always gone, and so they were everything, and then, you know, I got used to them being gone, and then they came back, and so now I'm back in the mode of, oh, this is nice again, you know, it's, it's nice to have my babies in my home. Okay. It's, for me, you know, I just came off, off mission in two weeks ago, and out of all the missions I've done, this is by far has been the worst. Um, <clears throat> Being on that mission and everything that's going on in the pandemic, you know, it really shifts your focus on everything. You know, and it was a lot of fear and a lot of stress. So to 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 be here and to have them back here and safe by far is, is the most appreciative thing. I can imagine as a father and seeing what you see in the world and just knowing that your family is together and safe, I, I'm sure that's got to be probably the number one priority. I, I, was, I, was, I was on mission. I, I was gone when all this first started. So Nisha and I was you know, managing you know, two different locations to get them back home and make sure they're safe. And, you know, she's stressing about the flights. And I'm stressing about the flying and everything that's going on. You know, it, it, it was a big stressful thing. So. They actually got home. Like when he spoke to Nisha, she was like, "Okay, I picked them up from the airport." You know, that was that conversation and those words were the most relief I had throughout the whole thing because I knew we were home and we were going to be safe. So just you know, just having them safe and, and be here and still you know be on top of their game and do the things they need to do to get ready. It's probably more than the best thing. Well, and I have to tell you that I was really, really um, happy to know that you guys were all together because um, I have a lot of friends who are connected with the military too, and they were hopeful that they could be reunited with um, certain loved ones and, and they're you know in quarantine. And so I'm just so happy that you were able to get home and that um, Akello and Kaya were able to get home too. Um, so Kaya and Akello, what's been the, the best thing to come out of this? Uh, honestly, there is a lot more free time to do things like play piano and like practice mixing and stuff. Um, so like in terms of like personal goals that I have set for myself, like there's a lot more time to do that. Like I'm not like waking up to go to work every morning. So like I can take my morning time and like maybe play piano for a couple hours before I like go to class. So, um. I, I guess free time has <laughs> been pretty good. <laughs> I, I personally
personally think it's one it is free time, but it's also that free time is a lot of time to reflect on yourself mm -hmm. and like kind of figure out what you want to change when you go back for the next semester. That's something that I've been doing a lot. It's just like, what do I want to be different from last semester and the semester before that going forward? Um, because I know that we are growing up. And so like, we do have to start making more like adult choices in the things that we do. And so it's like, how are we gonna, how are we gonna do that? You know, so we can move forward to be more independent in our lives. Um, so it's just like a lot of free time to think about myself and a lot of free time to think about what I want to do and like how I want to do things and like where I want to actually be in life. It's, it's giving me the time to sit down and genuinely think about that because, you know, when you're caught up with school and you're caught up with like the daily routine of your life, it's kind of hard to like think about the future because you're so worried about the now. Um, but now it's like, there's really nothing going on in the now. So. <laughs> I'm going to do but to think about the future. So what am I going to change? You know what I mean? So that's been really positive and I really do enjoy like reflecting like that because I think change is important. And I think, it, I think growth is very important and, and now is the time to do it. So <laughs> you're such an intellectual. <laughs> you're such an intellectual. So, so my next question then would be, how do you see education changing do you what do you think will change when you go back you know um what do you envision and what would you re well let's start with that let's start what do you think will change i feel like socially like in terms of like the social <laughs> aspect i feel like we're gonna see like a lot more students like giving it their all and realizing that hey being here is a privilege and that i should actually like get a lot of things done while I'm here instead of just like goofing off because it could just get taken away from you. Um, so I think a lot of more students are going to be appreciative of like physical class and whatnot. Um, in terms of like education like itself, I'm, I'm not too sure how that's going to change. Hopefully, like ideally, like we're all going back in the fall and like <laughs> there's no like problems there, but I, I, I would bet for sure. <laughs> yeah, I think like Akela was saying, I do think people are going to be a lot more appreciative. I specifically with like school events and things because no like like before you know people would be on campus but they really wouldn't really go to all the events that they were holding or like nobody really would show up for those things but now I feel like people are going to be more appreciative of like oh wow you know our school is doing all this stuff for us maybe I could you know, go, go show up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so togetherness is going to mean something yeah. a yeah. lot more now than it did before. I think we took for granted, you know, the humanness of, you know, humanity because we got so far into technology. And now it's like we really, we realize that the human, you know, experience is about human interaction. And without that, no matter how great our technology is, there's no substitute for a face-to-face. Yeah. yeah, you know, it really is no substitute. And, and it's great to have these alternatives, but also we have to value, you know, the humanness in everything that we do, even technology. Yeah, it's um, it's wonderful that everybody has been able to, you know, stay in contact and do online learning. Because if this would have happened in a time where there wasn't technology to do a Zoom, it would have been it would have been a lot more difficult. Yeah. Um, How did we survive without technology? I don't. I mean, I don't know. You know, I'm just, I wouldn't, I just. <laughs> that just seems so foreign to me that there was a generation that just didn't have technology and Google and cell phones. Well, it's crazy. Mailing your homework, boys. <laughs> <laughs> it's been, we're very lucky to live in a time where, like, even though we are going through an entire pandemic, we can still generally stay just as connected with people um, because we can talk like this, you know, it's 10 a.m. here and it's 2 p.m. there, but it's a, it's the same moment, it work, it's you know? the same <laughs> moment at just yeah. different times, you know, so it's really, that's really nice, but I do think people are going to appreciate the one-on-one, -on -one, person to person, face-to-face -face a lot more, right. um, and see how actually important it really is, you know, we're all, especially at CU, we're all there together, and it, so we should, we should feel more together, we should, <laughs> we should go to the events, we should go and, you know, Go see what the student government is talking about. You know, go pick up the school newspaper. And stuff like that. So I think people are gonna start appreciating a lot more. As far as education goes, I would like to say that it's 
how it just going to be the same run of the mill like lecture class go in there you know ready to grind hard maybe it will be a little more enthusiastic but i'm kind of hoping that generally it'll be it'll be um the same and also um i think people are going to be a lot more as far as like how, how can i say this accommodations mm -hmm. i think as far as accommodations go there should be no excuse at um why any student shouldn't be able to get the accommodation that they need, you know, if they right. need to do right. remote learning, they should be able to because we've seen how we can do it, you know, mm -hmm. so it shouldn't be a, like an issue with those kinds of things anymore either. Um, now that you've been a student in remote learning, um, would you have a recommendation to those of us who are educators or professors, like would you change anything about the experience at all? I, um, I'm lucky because my parents professors are like super understanding and whatnot, but if I did have to give advice to like any professors out there, it would be to like, everyone's different, everyone's situation's different, and like, you just got to be understanding of what's going on with your students. Yeah. Because it's like, no one likes to do bad in class, like that's, no one goes to college and it's like, I'm paying all this money to do bad, that's not a good feeling to like, when students are doing bad in your class and like actively like seeking help, you gotta like understand that like there's probably something more than that which you gotta like unpack. But that's just me. <laughs> yeah, I do think um, I think it's important to keep in contact with your students um, is really important. But also having the contact with your students that isn't school related is really important. Something that my professors have done is like they've made like uh, discussion boards on canvas for like positive things like you know send pictures of your pet or you know just offer some something peaceful that happened this week like little things like that so that way you can pull yourself out of everything that's happening right now same thing with my um my fiction workshop professor we had a we have our own discord server and we go on there and we just you know we just talk about what's going on and so it's just a support system for everyone and i think that's also really important if you as an educator can offer your students a support system then you absolutely should do that yeah i think that's what's different um with this generation now than when like your mom and dad and i were going to school where the prof your teacher was like you we didn't really have personal relationships with our teachers and they didn't really go into a lot of depth into like what was going on in our lives i mean the closest that came to that was like show and tell day where you would bring something from home and you can talk about the item that you brought but i have seen in the last 26 years as an educator how we've done more to build relationships with our students. I mean, I have families who have my personal cell phone number and they text me and students will send me messages and emails. And um, I guess we're more real, you know, to our students. And that, that can be a very, very positive thing. Cause like you said, um, it's so important to have that relationship. The generation I grew up on, we didn't have um, Google and cell phones and it was just uh, like we memorized I don't know how I memorized everybody's phone number yeah. <laughs> everybody's phone number memorized in my head and you know I laugh about it because like when I had to do a research paper I had to go to the library go to the card catalog flip through pull the card out go find the book and then write down the name of the book and the title stamp it with the with the librarian and then and then we'd save it and like it would just just the process of how we lived life was just very very interactive in a way um that looks very different to, yeah it's called card catalog look it up on the internet because i don't think they even ex do card catalogs i don't know maybe in the u.s i don't know i don't even think <laughs> do you even know what i mean when i say card catalog what happened <laughs> card catalog yeah that's like the the card with like the numbers on it right the dewey decimal system all right uh, yeah okay this it's uh, we're old we're just old now um i'm very i'm very young and hip you know why because i teach public school and my students make sure i know like the latest you know what's really funny it's like i when i finally figured out how to do paypal and then um people are like oh do you have cash app and i'm like Oh was God. and then then it was like Venmo and then it was like and then like there's all these I'm like oh my goodness how many ways can you give me money like just 
but trying to keep up with the latest, it is all these apps that do very similar things. Um, so, so what is, teach me something, what's new? What's new that I need to know so that I can be like cool and hip? Everything is literally COVID. Everything's coronavirus. I think all the trends are put on pause until this whole pandemic's over. So we'll we'll get you back up with. Yeah, I was gonna say it's gonna be interesting to see what you young people come up with once this is gone, once this is over and we're back to normal. Like what's gonna be the new like hip thing? Because honestly, it's always through a crisis when things change. Some, when we get comfortable, it's, it's, we're not really motivated to make a lot of changes. But when there's a crisis, um, we have, we're forced to, to make changes. And, and I just want to say to you guys, like you guys were the generation that were like babies when we had 9-11. You know, I was, um, I was in my fourth year of teaching. I was like, I think I was 25 when I was teaching high school. And 9-11 happened and it shut down everything. And I remember like it was yesterday and I'm thinking like as a teacher, now at that time, we didn't have remote learning. We didn't have the technology like we do today to do remote learning. Like we were all literally locked in, not sure what was going to happen. And I wish your generation knew what life was like pre 9-11 because the world really did look differently. And um, and I'm concerned about how the world's gonna change because of something like this for you. You'll always remember this time. It's really unprecedented of this generation, but um, you know, we have examples in history of um, the Great Depression. We have um, examples of different pandemics that have happened in our history. And one thing is for sure, we've always bounced back and we've bounced back stronger and we figured out new innovative ways to make things work. And I have no doubt that you guys is the future and whatever you do, you're going to be leading. You're going to be taking care of us. You know, <laughs> I need you to go to school and study hard and do good, you know, because you're so smart. You're both so articulate. You're caring, like for for your age. I um, am so surprised at how sensitive and aware you are about the people around you and just the words that you say and how you speak. You're very respectful in how you articulate your thoughts, how you even talk about your parents. I mean, in such loving ways that you talk about your parents. And, Denise, I want you to know your son loves you. Like, I'm like, when was the last time you talked to your mom? He's like, oh, I talk to my mom all the time. I talk to my mom. So it's like, you keep doing that because your parents hear from you. Um, so I've, I'm, I'm really, really um, proud of you. And so Apple, the work, Denisha and um, um, Bernard, that you have done, you should write a book or do a series on how to raise amazing kids and I will say this to being a teacher your kids don't act the same way at school as they do around you right we know this <laughs> but I have never seen your kids do anything that I felt like I had to call home for so you can rest assured that how they behave away from you is stellar like stellar, like you, you'll know. Cause I watch them and I'm like, mm -mm. you, you know, I'm, I'm your surrogate, <laughs> you know, I'm your surrogate here in Denver. But, um, I, I just love your kids to death. And so, um, I think all I wanted to say, okay. Do you know the new way to do it? Okay. This is the Korean way. Do you know how to do this? Did I? Oh yeah! Oh, you guys are professionals too. <laughs> yes. Well, I'm gonna give you closing thoughts. We are, we are almost out of time, but we ha we can do whatever we want. So, but I want to give you guys some time to talk about whatever you want to talk about. I I just wanted to take you know take some time out to say thank you to you and your husband for everything that you guys have done for our, our kids, uh, leaving you that day in the music store. You know, it, it honestly was one of the best blessings that we could have ever expected to 
because even though we had just met you, there was a level of trust. There was a level of comfort. You know, it was the first time Kello <clears throat> when, you know, was leaving home. And we had a lot of anxiety about actually leaving him there. And, and to know that, you know, you and your husband was there and you guys have been there and, you know, mentoring him and you know, having him to your house for dinner and Thanksgiving and stuff like that. Same thing with Kaya, you know, you know, pulling her in when she got there. We truly, from my heart, appreciate everything that you have done for us. Like, seriously. Yes, because it, it, it has relieved so much anxiety yes. uh, uh, on us. You know, having our kids there, <clears throat> you know, and having them grow up here, you know, it, it's a different mindset growing up in Hawaii and growing up in Bangladesh. And to have them there and have a support system that you guys have provided for them is just stellar. So, you know, from my heart, I'm pretty sure Nisha feels the exact same way. Thank you so much. Like, seriously. And you took care of these little rugrats. Yes. <laughs> yes. And we appreciate everything that you do. And I rest easy at night knowing that you got another mother, y'all. Okay. And she will, she will get down with you. So um, I appreciate that because that that's provided me peace of mind and also been our peace of mind. So we just want to say thank you and we appreciate it. Yeah, like, seriously. Like, well, it's it's our pleasure, really. Um, this really is a passion of mine. This the space of education and children and young people. Um, I, I really do love it. And I, and I have so many people that I was in that same situation as a college student where um, people took me under their wings and mentored me and took care of me. And so I just want to pay it forward as much as I can. If anybody um, um, wants to receive that smothering, um, you know, we, I know I can speak on behalf of Darren too. Anybody who shows an interest and wants to be a part of our lives and our family, we just embrace them. 100 percent it, it, it shows it shows you know it, it i still think back to the first day you know we came to the studio and we got to you know, see everything you know that right there uh it was just it was, it was an amazing moment it, it really was and it's something that nisha and i cherish for the rest of our lives because in that moment <clears throat> you know that was the beginning of kello's career his legacy you know and, and going forward, I always tell them this, when you get your first grand, we'll be on the front row and be pointing at you. Exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, yeah. Sorry, I'm tearing up. Like, oh. But it, it's, it's just being honest. <laughs> I, don't to, I know I don't. Mm -hmm. I don't get a chance to speak to you and Darren, you know, as often. And it's something that, you know, I've always wanted to express to you how grateful I am for all that you've done. You know, you coming in that music store, Exact moment when we were doing what we were doing, you know, it was it was meant to be. It was meant. To, it had to be. There's no other way. I was so frantic to have to leave him in yeah, Denver. Oh. Kaya stuck around because I think she kind of just felt sorry for me. <laughs> 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 do all this great stuff, and I'm gonna do. And I'm like, oh my goodness, can you just please make a decision within Hawaii? Like, can you just go to Hawaii <laughs> or something? But he was dead set that he was ready to go, and I was like, well, I can't. You know, I can't <laughs> make him stay, but it was so good to know that there was a good person there waiting to receive him to, you know, kind of help my fears because I was losing it a little. I was just like, just crying and I was like, I can't lose my baby. But then it, just, it made it better. Uh, so. Well, <laughs> and on that note, with all the big love that's... Oh, <laughs> what a great way to have spent this past hour just to hear from you and talk to you young college students and mom and dad and to get your perspectives i've thoroughly under, uh, appreciated this time and i hope and pray that you guys stay healthy yes. take care of yourselves try to find the joy every day get some sunshine and um call whenever you need anything going to be so excited to have you back at CU Denver this fall. That's the goal. And continue to give you a world-class education. So thanks for your time. Yeah, of course. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. Bye. Bye. Take care.